This is Super Yacht News with Yves Sisman. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. All right guys, I wanted to bring you an update on Moti Yacht Amadea. Um, if you are a regular to my channel, you'll know that she has been detained since arrival in Fiji on the 12th of April. Now, quick backstory is the vessel was in the Caribbean and she, f she left the Caribbean and headed a west through the Panama Canal. I believed at the time. Well, I believe I believe that she was uh, preparing to head to Vladivostok in Russia uh, via Panama Canal on the Pacific Ocean. She went to Manzanillo in Mexico, most likely to fill up with fuel, and then she she sailed all the way across the Pacific to Fiji. Upon arrival in Fiji, she was detained by the Fijian government uh, along with the U.S. Uh, I've had some involvement in this, which I'm going to go into now. So, as I said, she was detained on the 12th of April in Fiji. Now, uh, what there's some some weird stuff going on here, uh, which I'm, I'm trying to get to the bottom of. Um, a little bit of different stories, and I think I understand what's going on now, but I'll go through it. So, on the 17th of April, it was reported in the Fiji Times and the Fiji Sun that the Fiji Revenue and Customs Service had issued two infringement notices to the captain of the Superyacht Amadea under the Customs Act of 1986. These included notices under Section 14 for failure to comply with the procedure on arrival and Section 17 which deals with the failure to comply with persons disembarking a vessel. Now. Section 14 deals with infringements under procedural on arriving, where the master of every aircraft or ship arriving in Fiji shall bring the ship or aircraft to an airport or port or mooring without touching any other place. So it, I think it's quite obvious what this rule is there to prevent. Uh, you're sailing in on a vessel, you are going to your first port, which is where you pass through immigration, right? And then, but in the meantime, or before you get there, you stop somewhere else and you drop off a, a ton of drugs. So that, that seems to be, for me, what that rule is about, right? So you cannot stop anywhere else. You must go straight there. Now, one of the interesting things is, and I don't know whether this is relevant at all, but the whole time that Amadeo was crossing the Pacific, and we covered this in previous videos, the destination on AIS was Nandi, N-A-D-I, Nandi, right, in, on, the, on this island. Uh, in, in Fiji. Now when they arrived, uh, the, the vessel actually docked in another place called Lawatuko, I think it's pronounced. So the, the, the destination did change. I don't know whether that is what they're relating to there. So the penalty for this offence is a fine not exceeding $20,000 Fijian, which is about $10,000 US, or imprisonment for four years uh, for that infringement. The second uh, thing is section 17, which deals with provisions as to persons disembarking from or going on board an aircraft or ship. And the there is a fine for this also, which is uh, not exceeding 10,000 Fijian dollars or about 5,000 US dollars. So uh, these are the two things that were, were placed against the captain. This was on the 17th, reported on the 17th in two newspapers. Now it's interesting because a source has told me that there was a crew change uh, arranged in Fiji for Amadea, uh, which possibly explains this infringement, right? Section 17, failure to comply with persons disembarking. Now, it sounds to me, again, this is, this is a hypothesis, that they arranged for crew to leave and crew to join, which crew change, and they didn't in inform the proper authorities or there was some sort of issue there with that, and that's why they've got that infringement. So that makes sense for that for that uh, offense right uh, the source also tells me that the captain the ongoing captain to Amadea and the head of security was stopped in LA in the, in the US and didn't join the vessel with the other crew I don't know why they were stopped I don't know whether that's accurate I cannot confirm this independently so just take that you know with the weight that it, it deserves but this crew change is similar to what happened on Motiart Nord before she left the Seychelles to go to Vladivostok, right? They, they took off a lot of the crew, the British crew and the, and the European crew, and a few stayed, and I believe some Russians joined and the vessel went to Vladivostok. So that's similar, right? 
and the according to the source again that the plan for this yacht was that the per the crew information that she uh, needed to make the crew change and then travel to dry dock in the Philippines which was most likely a cover story for Vladivostok right why do you need to change the crew to go to a dry dock like the whole crew there's not I mean nobody nobody does that on super yachts so um, so anyway, when the vessel arrived on the 12th of April, this is also from the source, the crew were interviewed by the FBI until the early hours of the morning, 4 a.m. Fijian times. That means that the FBI were already in Fiji when the vessel arrived, which is interesting, isn't it? And in, in the previous video where we talked about Amadea, I said that there was only three reasons why the vessel could have been in this situation, but there is a fourth because it could be that they gave permission to the vessel to come, knowing that they were going to uh, detain the vessel when it arrived, but they didn't want them to know. So as soon as the vessel arrives, the vessel gets detained. Um, so the British High Commission in Suva, in Fiji, has confirmed that some of the crew members on board Amadea are British nationals. So here's where the story gets interesting. So the Chief of Police in Fiji told the FBC News, uh, Fiji Broadcasting Company News, that their counterparts in the US have made submissions to the government through the Attorney General regarding the proceedings of the investigation. So the US have said they want this is what they want to do and that's gone to the Attorney General of Fiji. Now on the 18th the next day from those those from those charges that were reported in the two newspapers on the 17th and then the the US put in uh, proceedings on the 18th of April the, uh, the FBC uh, news channel says this. The Amadea is being investigated for possible breaches of Fiji's exclusive economic zone and money laundering. Now they're saying that the second infringement is money laundering, which is, which I, I can't, I can't figure out how that could be based on that section 17 that we read out earlier, you know, to do with persons embarking or disembarking. Anyway, that's what they're saying now, according to the FBC uh, news channel. But if you think back, when Motiot Tango was arrested in Spain, the US government got involved in that vessel, didn't they? And they accused Victor Vexelberg, the owner of Motiot Tango, of money laundering. It was one of the things they accused him of. And that is what, that's how they're going through the courts to seize that vessel. So they're, they're, they've applied to seize that vessel based on money laundering, right? And the US government have applied to Fiji, and now that the, the charge seems to have changed to money laundering, unless that's a mistake, I don't know, but it, uh, it seems like the charge has changed to money laundering. So it, it's, to me, it feels like this, this is how they're gonna go after this vessel, the US government. Uh, the FBI in Fiji, the, F, the uh, US government are going through the Attorney General of Fiji to uh, to start proceedings so I'm j that's just my opinion there on that last bit so anyway guys so uh, we'll just keep stay tuned and we'll uh, I'll keep you updated as soon as I find out more on that one other thing about Amadea is I had some people telling me that the, the vessel was fueling refueling um, it doesn't mean anything unusual a vessel is running on its generators even when it's docked um, because it has has to for you know for lighting and AC and stuff like that and and um, so they need fuel and it doesn't mean they're going anywhere um, one other story um, I had a, quite a few people contact me asking me about Motiot Solange she is uh, she was in, in in Hamburg she was actually she was in the same shipyard as, as Dilbar and um, they were asking me had she fled because it had been, the vessel had been arrested or the vessel had been detained there and um, what was going on with that. Well, I can confirm that the vessel, Motiel Solange, was detained in Hamburg on the 4th of April uh, as it, she was believed to belong to um, Su Suleiman Kerimov, who's the alleged owner of Amadea. But on the 12th of April, uh, the boat papers were, were, were provided and it said that it was owned by Saudi Sheikh Mukran bin Abdullah Aziz. So they confirmed that it was not owned by a Russian and the vessel left Hamburg and went to Gibraltar. And you can see the footage here of the vessel actually leaving Gibraltar after refueling most likely 
and this is from uh, the the YouTube channel uh, Gibraltar Yachting. So be sure to check out Gibraltar Yachting. I'll put a link above so you can check out the channel. Um, anyway, guys, I'm going to leave it there. Um, very unusual situation going on here with Amadea, but I'm all over it. So um, as soon as I find out something, I will get. I will. Uh, I'll do an update. So be sure to. Uh, subscribe here and click the little bell so you get all the updates and also be sure to like this video um, and let me know what you think in the comments below actually because um, if, if you've got any information about this you can post a comment or you can contact me through the email address in the about page of YouTube or you can contact me through Facebook, Facebook Messenger uh, but I'd be really interested to get more information on this story if you have it. Alright guys thanks very much for watching and I'll catch up with you soon. Bye-bye.